guys hello friends hello jesus your boy again falling with a star so guys i want us to look at this topic called the bone tissue this is a tissue so obviously it is going to be made up of what cells so bone cells come together to form what bone tissue now the question is what are the bone cells we have four main types of what bone cells some also say that we have five main types and we are going to look at them the first one that i want us to look at is the osteoprogenitor cell which other people also call the osteogenic cell this is a representation of what the osteogenic cell it is mononucleated it contains only one nucleus and this osteogenic cell is, is it is being derived from this stem cell called the mesenchymal stem cell so the mesenchymal stem cell also serve as the mother that gives birth to all the connective tissues in our body so the mesenchymal stem cell gives birth to the cartilage and the bone that we are going to talk about so we derive this osteoprogenitor cell from this mesenchymal stem cell and this osteoprogenitor cell my question is where can we find them we can actually find them in the periosteum and the endosteum let's assume that this is a bone tissue the outermost layer of the bone tissue is called the periosteum and the innermost layer of the bone tissue is called the endosteum and these layers are being lined by these cells we call what the osteogenic cells now during bone formation these osteoprogenitor cells they actually undergo something we call mitosis and differentiate into the next cell that we are going to talk about which is the what the osteoblast these osteoblasts they are known to be what builders why are we calling them builders because they are known to be the bone forming cells unlike the osteogenic cells these osteoblasts they don't undergo what mitosis now my question is what do they do these osteoblasts they secrete an uncalcified matrix called the osteoid the uncalcified matrix is called the osteoid and after the secretion of this uncalcified matrix there will be the deposition of this inorganic ions called calcium and what inorganic phosphates after the deposition of these inorganic ions the bone matrix will become what calcified so from uncalcified what calcified after the calcification of the matrix this osteoblast they will be they will be trapped in the what in the calcified matrix and they will change to this cell we call the osteocyte the osteocytes one thing not forgetting about the osteoblasts is that they also secrete a certain hormone called what the osteocarcin osteocarcin and this osteocarcin stimulates the pancreas to release insulin which helps in what glucose metabolism so guys let's look at the osteocytes the osteocytes they are oblate shaped this is a representation of what the osteocytes they are mononucleated they also have these extensions that we call the flipodia they are known to be what the mature bone cells the mature bone cells the osteoblasts they are immature bone cells but the osteocytes they are what mature bone cells and the flipodia of one osteocyte will attaches to the flipodia of what the other osteocytes and they will form this junction we call the gap junction so within the gap junction there will be exchange of what nutrients ions and other stuff so communication is through what this junction we call the gap junction unlike the other cells unlike the osteogenic cell that we talk about that it can undergo mitosis this osteocyte doesn't undergo what mitosis and they also don't produce what the bone matrix but they help maintain what the bone matrix they help maintain the bone matrix we also have another type of bone cell called the osteoclast this osteoclast it is large and multinucleated unlike the other cells that we talk about which is what uh, mononucleated this is multinucleated and this too is movable so it is mortal this movable so it is mortal now my question is where does it come from when you look at the blood the blood contains the white blood cells a special type of the white blood cell called monocytes during bone formation these monocytes actually differentiate into this cell we call the osteoclast and these osteoclasts they contain what enzymes that help them to break down what bones so they break down what bones because they contain that enzyme that will help them to break down the bones and the breaking down of bone is what we call the reabsorption so when you hear reabsorption is the breakdown of what bones so now guys let's look at something here the question is is bone a connective tissue the answer is yes bone is a connective tissue if bone is a connective tissue that means that it will contain cells fibers and also ground substances so the cells fibers and the ground substances they actually form what the organic component of what the bone tissue and the organic component of the bone tissue actually contributes to what 35 percent of the bone tissue the fibers mainly collagen fibers and collagen type one to be precise 
we also have the inorganic component of what the bone tissue which actually contributes to what 65 percent and this inorganic component it is mainly being made up of these two ions called what calcium and what inorganic phosphate so the calcium and inorganic phosphate contribute to what the inorganic component of what the bone tissue the calcium and the inorganic uh, inorganic phosphate together we call them the hydrosy apatite hydrosy apatite so these two together we call them what the hydrosy apatite now the next thing that we, we are going to talk about is bone class, uh, classification now bone they can be classified based on duration shape and also structure based on duration we have two types of bones we have the woven or the immature bone and we have the lamella or what the mature bone the woven or the immature bone it is the first bone being formed so people also call it the primary bone and this is very weak the reason why it is very weak is that when you look at the woven bone its collagen fibers are being irregularly they are irregularly being arranged you understand its fibers its collagen fibers are irregularly being arranged and that makes them very weak and this woven bone are actually being formed during what fetal development during what fetal development and they are temporary because as you grow they will be replaced by what this laminar bone that we are going to talk about this is the second bone going to be formed so we call it the secondary bone and also the mature bone understand and this is the main type of bone and mature what skeleton it is known to be very strong why because its collagen fibers are regularly being arranged so they become compact and becomes what very strong so that's what for the laminar bone and the laminar bone we have two types we have the compact bone and the spongy bone we will look at them later so now let's move to the next classification which is based on what shape hello guys so before we even talk about the shape the woven bone which is also known as the immature bone i said that they are being formed during what fetal development they can also be found in adults but only during fractured or paget disease states so now guys let's look at the shape based on shape we have the short bones the long bones flat bones and what irregular bones and also the sesamoid bone let's just do an overview of the shape the short bones they are long as wide example is what the carpals of the wrist their function is that they provide support and also stability we also have the long bones they are longer than wide an example is the what the femur the humerus and the clavicle so obviously you know that this will help in what movement you understand also have the flat bones they are very thin example is what the sternum the cranial bones and also the ribs and these they protect internal organs you see the ribs they protect what the heart and the staff and the other staffs and also they have what a broad surface for attachment of what muscles you understand we have the irregular bones for them they vary in shape you cannot actually classify them under these types that we've talked about so for them we call them the irregular bones example is what the vertebrae we also have the sesamoid bone and these bones they develop within tendons and example is what the patella the kneecap and also the pisiform which is an which is a, an example of what a ridge bone you understand an example of what ridge bone then last one that i said that we talk about is the what the womian bone the womian bone they are being found in sutures so when you look at your skull the sutures sometimes there's these bones that develop in these tissues we call them the womian the womian bones the womian bones yeah so based on structure the structural classification of bone so based on structure we have two main types of bones we have the compact bone and also the what the spongy bone so now let's look at the features of what the compact bone before we look at the microscopic differences between what the spongy bone and what the compact bone. So when we are looking at a unit of bone, the outer layer is what consists of what the compact bone. So this outer layer is what consists of what the compact bone. And the internal tissue of what the bone is what the spongy bone. The internal tissue of what the bone is what the spongy bone. So now the compact bone they are very dense smooth and also white in appearance and now the question is what is their function because they are very dense they help the bone to resist what we call compression compression you understand 
compression let's move to the next type of bone which is the spongy bone this spongy bone as i said it is the internal tissue of the bone and it is very porous it has many holes see many holes and this uh, hole serve as what a passageway for what blood vessels and because of that this spongy bone they are highly vascular they contain more blood vessels than what the compact bone and because they are very porous they are weak you understand and this spongy bone are being formed by what speckles you understand we will look at these speckles later you understand you know how they look like don't worry so now guys let's look at the microscopic difference between what the microscopic differences between what the compact bone and what the spongy bone the compact bone and the spongy bone and i'll do that in the next video